commentary, and uh, uh, he will talk about a search for 29 with far infrared old sky survey data. So let's welcome him. Thank you for the introduction. It's, uh, it's my honor to give a talk here today. And uh, I would like to uh, introduce uh, my current research, which is a search for planet I using uh, fire infrared or sky survey data. And before I start, uh, I would like to uh, uh, expect my gratefulness to Professor Tomo, Dr. Yamamura, and Nakagawa from JASA. And you are COSA searching from uh, NTHU and um, NCHU Cosmology Group, uh, led by Professor uh, Hashimoto for their support in, during uh, this project. So, uh, what is Planet 9 and why we need to find it? So, um, recently, um, when scientists analyzed the orbit of a Kuiper object in the outer solar system, uh, they found out uh, this object has um, high uh, eccentric uh, orbit and they perform uh, an unusual orbital clustering um, not only in perihelion but also in the physical space. And uh, the simulation work of uh, Batigan and Brown suggests that uh, this clustering only have 0.007% to happen by random process. So it's almost impossible unless uh, this cluttering related to another uh, un, um, dynamical process. And they suggest <coughs> um, a giant a distant planet to um, explain this perturbation. And the simulation results suggest that this giant planet, uh, which is called Planet 9, can maintain the orbital clustering of uh, carbon belt object. If it, uh, 10 times heavier than Earth, and uh, they always have a semi major acid of 700 AU. And uh, the orbit of Planet 9 uh, was predicted to uh, have a very long orbital uh, period, uh, which is uh, 10 to uh, thousand, uh, uh, 10 to 20,000 years. And uh, the perihelion also 180 uh, degrees away from the perihelion of other uh, pair object. So, uh, however, today there's no observational no, um, evidence to confirm the existence of Planet Nine. So, what happened? So, uh, the challenge in finding Planet Nine. The, the first reason is because uh, Planet Nine is very far away from Earth. It's very, very dim, um, even it's roughly 10 times heavier than Earth. And here, uh, the, it's more difficult to uh, detect or reflect the sunlight from uh, Planet 9 rather than the thermal radiation. Uh, here, the reflected sunlight is uh, uh, 100 times uh, degenerate faster than the thermal radiation in, uh, in infrared. So uh, that's why the source from optical survey is much fainter than though from infrared surveys. Uh, in fact, that, um, re uh, in recent years, there's many sources of planet are using uh, optical survey, but they fail. On the other hand, when the infrared light travel to the Earth, it uh, would be absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere. By combining these two conditions, um, the Infrared survey using the infrared space telescope is promising promise, uh, approach to finding Planet 9. And because we don't know where Planet 9 is in the dark space of the outer solar system, that's why we need uh, all sky surveys. And there are two typical all sky surveys that can meet the requirement with their uh, far infrared filter, which are IRAS and ACARI. And for the IRAS, we use four main catalog, which are points of fence, points of reject, and fence of reject. Uh, the reason for the rejection uh, is the failure uh, to confirm source in multiple scan. And for Akari, we use um, monthly unconfirmed source catalog by uh, Yamamura, uh, which it, uh, include the moving source uh, with, without monthly confirmation. 
Okay, so um, this is the total source number and the detection limit in the most sensitive band of each catalog. And you see uh, the operating time of IRAS and Akari was separated by 23 years, which is large enough to detect the motion of Planet 9 because Planet 9 is expected to move only a few arc minutes per year, depends on the heliocentric distance. Uh, let's move on to the selection process. First, we want to uh, estimate the expected flux and orbital motion of Planet 9. And in this work, we search for a uh, planet candidate uh, below uh, the uh, Neptune mass. And our um, uh, plot of flux as a function of distance show that the 700 AU is the maximum distance that can make sure all of Canada above the detection limit of IRAS and Akari. So that's why we search in the distance range of 500 to 700 AU. And for the uh, expected orbital motion, we adopted this formula from Cohen paper. And then we rewrite uh, for our case of uh, 23 years. That's what, uh, so we obtain this uh, formula and the orbital motion as a function of heliocentric look like this. If you go further uh, on the uh, distant axis, the orbital motion getting smaller. In the next step, we try to remove the non-moving source in uh, IRAS and Akari catalog because our uh, target is the planet. So it should be a um, moving source instead of the non-moving one. And here we cross my Akari with four IRAS catalog. Then um, we uh, continue with other well-known catalog like uh, two mass, Y, so on, to exclude all non-moving source. And each um, cross-matching result uh, include uh, two histogram with the Gaussian fitting curve. And uh, <coughs> after, cross, uh, after the fitting, we derive the sigma delta i and sigma delta d. Uh, then we selected a radius of two sigma to cross map uh, to, to remove the mass source. Uh, then for the uh, uh, select, uh, position and flux selection, uh, this is the uh, general flow chart in our work. After selecting a um, moving object, we continue uh, to select the source above, above the detection limit and certify, the, uh, 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 certify our expected flux value. Then we create a candidate pair. Each, each candidate pair includes one IRA source and one ARCA resource. And here we consider uh, uh, the planet nine will be detected in both IRAS and Akari, but different coordinate after uh, 23 years. And to do that, we calculate the angular separation between IRAS and Akari source. Then we apply this condition, these two value corresponding to the, uh, the distance uh, 500 and 700 AU. Then it eventually we constrain a list of 1.1 thousand pair in the final list. So we continue with uh, the, the next, in, in the next step, we will show the uh, uh, cut image, the comparison between IRAS and Akari. So in the first candidate pair, uh, the IRAS source uh, it, uh, is from the Fengso uh, catalog. And for easier comparison, we print uh, this coordinate to the uh, Akari image. And if uh, is it the uh, uh, planet nine, it should be moved from uh, IRAS coordinate to Akari coordinate uh, with the angular separation show here. And you may wonder, this is with the source, right? But ori uh, originally, we also worry about this case. If this is the source, it means that our selection process has problem. But to account for this uh, situation, we uh, overblock uh, the photometry data of Akari price source catalog. And it turns out there's no green circle overlap with uh, this white circle. So this is not a source detected in Akari. Uh, it may come from the uh, background of Akari image. And the second, to, to, to trace the orbital motion of Akari source, we use the detection probability map 
uh, in the two top panel, uh, you can see it's the same day but different hour. So the source can be confirmed in some hour, bit, but half year later, it can be confirmed. So this is um, maybe a slow moving source. And the, in the second pair, we have a similar situation and there's no green circle overlap with the white circle of uh, ARA source. And yeah, this is also a, a slow moving source. So if there's no source confirmed here, it means uh, there's no uh, uh, hourly confirmation. So this should be a fast moving source. So in the next step, we want to uh, determine the orbital motion uh, of planet nine by follow-up uh, observation. And uh, Subaru Hypersupply can, uh, can offer a better chance with their uh